locked in here with you. That's it! You're locked in here with me! Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Real Estate Realities with the Rebel Broker. My name's Robert Whitelaw, and I am the Rebel Broker. Licensed real estate broker in the state of California, member of the National Association of Real Boars. But please, don't hold that against me. Coming at you today with some interesting numbers. We're going to take a look at communities that have recovered the most and the least since the downturn. I know I was surprised. I was particularly uh, surprised by uh, some of our top performers. Well, our number one top performer. Not so much by some of the ones on that list, but but the one at the top really kind of was an interesting one, particularly given some of the advice I've handed out uh, within the last year or two. Hope you are all having a great week. In terms of other little news tidbits before we jump into those, there are a couple. One little uh, bit of inspiration here is that CoreLogic reported that home prices are up 4% year over year in December. Uh, and that's the numbers we like, right? We like the ones that compare one year to the same time in the previous year. Uh, so that's a, a good number to know. Um, month to month, unless you know what the seasonal variability is in, a, in a various markets, it's really not a horribly useful number. It's interesting when you're getting into the really tight stuff. Like, for instance, I'm paying attention to that quite a bit just to see if the rate of change from month to month mirrors last year. But in terms of you figuring out your yearly assessment of your properties or your standing, doing the year-to-year -year comparison is much more useful for you. So that's kind of an interesting little tidbit. Uh, but the real juice today is going to be a bit of news that comes from Smart Asset. Smart Asset is a group that we have talked about before. Uh, I'm actually a big fan of a lot of their reports. They put out some great info. And I will be linking in the show notes to their study because it's really kind of interesting. And I don't know whether to start with the least recovered communities or the most recovered communities. Before we get into sort of the details of that, though, let's talk about why this information is potentially valuable to you. Um, a lot of it is going to depend on you getting more knowledge about these areas, right? One of the things we try to do is to fuel your ability to go out and find the right places to look for good deals, right? Uh, or good places to invest. Um, it may, you know, we, sometimes the numbers we talk about are insane. So it, while a home price may not be sound like a great deal in terms of a barrier to entry, right? Coming up with say five hundred thousand dollars in some markets, or in my markets, a million dollars, right? To buy a home is difficult. But you want to take a look at the overall performance in the marketplace, right? There are still some folks who argue that San Francisco. The Silicon Valley area is still a good place to invest. It really depends on what you're trying to invest in, I suppose. Um, renting is 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 really not great. I mean, in terms of utility of your money, but appreciation sure has paid off for an awful lot of folks. I would argue that we're at kind of a high point where we don't see a whole lot more headroom on that. But if you're planning to buy and hold for a really long time, historically, it's hard to argue with history. And the Bay Area has tended to just continue to go. So we may have a period of time where things go flat for a while, uh, but things tend to recover. So it really depends on what your strategy is. But these will be numbers that will help fuel your decision-making process to decide uh, what you want to do there. Now, before we jump into this, I want to kind of talk about uh, the video that I posted to YouTube. I'm going to also send out a message to the folks on the underground, but I wanted to let everyone know. I was surprised. That, I guess I need to be better at really just sort of pumping this stuff up. But uh, I did post a video on how to walk through the process of finding an investment property. So that's up on YouTube uh, right now. If you want to go take a look at it, it's available on the channel. Just go to YouTube, do a search on Rebel Broker. I will come up. And you can check that out and see if it's useful. Of course, any questions or, or anything else you want to bring up or suggest, feel free to do that at therebelbroker.com. 
Uh, there's a place there to click the button and get in contact with me. You can also go to soldbyrobert.com, which is my real estate business site. That's that's the main, you know, come talk to me about real estate to do business together uh, type of site. So either way, you can reach me. Uh, they both end up in the same place. So in terms of what you should be focused on, and it really depends, again, on what your goal is. Are you a buyer who's really just looking for the next best place to live? Are you a seller? Uh, and you want to find out what things are going on in your marketplace. Are you an investor? And you want to find the next great market to invest in. Uh, I think these are always great numbers to look at. And sometimes you can tease out very interesting information relating to your local area. So I think these are great numbers to, to be up to date on. Let's go ahead and start with the least amount of recovery. Um, at number 100 is the Baltimore, Columbia, Townsend, Maryland area. Um, it starts with the pre-crisis peak quarter, which is kind of a nice thing to know. So the first quarter of 2007 uh, is, is its pre-crisis peak. Interesting that it's a little bit later than some other areas, uh, Some, f which means the, that the, the impact of the downturn um, was felt maybe a little bit later than in some areas. Like Newark, for instance, is almost a year earlier. Uh, Bridgeport, Stamford, Norwalk, Connecticut, year earlier. New Haven, Milford, a couple, a quarter or two earlier. Um, so it's and then uh, some areas it was much earlier. Uh, Grand Rapids, Kentwood, Michigan, qu for fourth quarter of two thousand and five was its peak. And by hit, I, what I mean is that it's interesting that the peak for some of these areas is way before the actual full-blown downturn started. So kind of interesting to try to figure out, well, why was that? What were the market forces at, at play in that area to have it get, be victimized first? I always like to find that canary in the coal mine community. So if I start to see stuff going weird in one area, that makes me start looking more closely at that to look at broader trends to see if we're looking at something that might apply to other marketplaces. So that's, that's why I think that's an interesting piece of data. And then the other note here is the crisis low point. So when things got their worst, what year and quarter was it for that particular area? So that's interesting data to have, and that's included in this research. Now, the percentage change in house price index is also included. So the pre-crisis peak to trough. So that's the percentage drop from the highest amount to the lowest amount after the crisis. Um, and then the pre-crisis peak to current. So in other words, comparing today's values in these communities to the highest point before the crisis. That's a super interesting number. Uh, and we'll look at that one as well. And from the trough, from the lowest point to current. And we, we'll cover all these numbers. So all right, so we'll start with the worst performing, as I said, Baltimore, Columbia, Townsend, Maryland, Maryland, and uh, as we mentioned, it was the first quarter of 2007 when they had their peak. The trough, the lowest point for this community, was the first quarter of 2012, and the pre-crisis peak, so from the peak, so from the highest price before the crisis to the lowest point after the crisis was a 16.5% drop. That's actually not that bad. Uh, we've talked before about communities that seemed a little bit more resistant to the downturn. That's not bad. I would love, to, I would prefer to see, in order for me to consider that less impacted, I think that would have to be below 10%. Uh, we do actually have a couple of communities that are on that list, ones that were not impacted as harshly as others uh, that are actually on this list. So we'll take a look at those when the time comes. The next number for this area is the pre-crisis peak to current. So today, compared to the highest point before the crisis, and that gives us a 7.9% decrease. So prices are actually down. If you look at the current prices versus the pre-crisis peak, it hasn't reached that point yet. So it's one of those communities that's in that category. We haven't seen a lot of them in the numbers we've done but this is one that is. And then the lowest point to current, they're up 10.37%. So what, what should we consider relating to that? Um, I think it's interesting to look at it and compare it to other data that we've looked at. For instance, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about a return on investment research. 
if you mix areas where the property values have not gone up at an insane rate, but you've seen their return on investment in terms of rentals be good, that could spell an interesting opportunity for you. So these are bits of data that you could take and put in the context of other bits of data and figure out if it's a community that might be worth looking into for you. Now, how would you do that? Uh, you know, maybe I'll do a video on that specific topic. I think that would actually be a good one. So maybe I will save that. But I'd use some of the techniques we've already talked about. So um, you can look at sites like Zillow and Trulia, any sites that actually will give you market information that go back years. You can see what rental rates have done. If rental rates have gone down in these communities where property values have been the worst, where the recovery has been the least, like Baltimore, Columbia, Towns, and Maryland, then that means, well, okay, probably not worth my time. But if you saw stable or even any kind of increase in rental rates, you didn't see a huge drop and you're not seeing a drop now, that could spell a good opportunity for you in terms of being involved in a community that hasn't really outstripped you in terms of ability to spend or ability to acquire there. All right, number, like, what do we want to call this? Number nine on the bad list? No, that was the worst. I'm sorry. Baltimore, Columbia, Townsend was the worst. The second worst was Wilmington, Delaware, Maryland, New Jersey. Uh, same quarter, 2007, was the high point prior to the crisis. The fourth quarter of 2012 was the lowest point for that community, and they saw a 24.1% drop from the peak to the lowest point after the uh, real estate crisis hit. Then they, from pre-crisis peaked to current, it's negative 13.8%, so even more than Baltimore, the prices are even lower. But in terms of Recovery from the lowest point. In other words, at the absolute lowest point after the crisis, how much have we recovered from that point? It's up 13.58%. When you take into account how much it dropped from the peak to the trough, though, that's actually pretty good. That's 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 pr half. That's pretty decent performance. I know that sounds weird in context, but that's the way it feels to me. Uh, number three on the worst list is Newark, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. The second quarter of 2006 is the pre-crisis peak. Um, fourth quarter of 2011 is its lowest point after the downturn. Twenty Net down, 24.6% is the peak to the trough. And 13%, down 13%, is the crisis peak to current, pre-crisis peak, right? So in other words, the highest point to today, down 13%. But lowest point to today, up 15.5%. Interesting to note that nobody is at the lowest point, right? That makes sense, given where we were. Uh, but there is nobody at that point, and there is nobody even vaguely close. Everybody is at least 10% up from the lowest point. So th there's that. Uh, next, number four on the worst list is Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. P-A-N-J. Uh, first quarter 2007 is the pre-crisis peak. Quarter 2 2012 is the lowest point, down 26.9% from the peak before the crisis to the trough. And then the pre-crisis peak to current to today is still down 14.2%. Uh, and 17.42% is the increase from the trough to today from the lowest point to today. El, let's see, what's the next one? The fifth worst, El Paso, Texas. That's an interesting one. Uh, first quarter of 2007 from the pre-crisis uh, peak. Third quarter of 2011 is the lowest point after the crisis. Down 8.5%. So in my book, that's not bad. So I, and, and this is the worst performing in relation to these other communities listed. But in terms of communities that responded to the downturn, it's interesting to note that it really wasn't hit horribly hard. Uh, this would be a community where I'd, if, in order for this to fuel interest in potential investment, I'd want to get an idea of what was the average price, what did they do, I'd want to find out what the rental situation looks like in El Paso. Texas has typically been a great place to look at. Uh, I haven't really done much looking into El Paso. I've looked at Dallas. I've looked at 
Austin, uh, but not really at El Paso. Uh, but this is also the first one on our list where there is a positive number from peak crisis, pre-crisis peak to current. So it's 9% over what its highest point before the crisis was. So that's, that's a pretty good number. 19.21% up from its lowest point. So the number, while this, it's because, and this, one reason why I like to present this data this way or, or discuss both ends of this spectrum is this, is, this is not a list where you should think to yourself, well, I only want to go to the top communities, right? I only want to go to the communities that did the best in this category. No. You know, opportunity tends to come from interesting intersections of this data, not necessarily the 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 position it does comes up in, the, in a list like this. Now, that's not quite so much on return on investment. Obviously, if we are listing off communities with the highest return on investment for, for landlords, well, clearly you want the highest return on investment, right? So that, that's, that, that list is different. But this one is one to actually help fuel your potential interest in getting more information, particularly about the rental marketplace. Okay. So having said that, let's move on to number, I believe it's four on the worst list, Albany, Schenectady, Troy, New York. Second quarter of 2007 was the peak prior to the crisis. Quarter two, 2011 was the lowest point in this particular community. They were down 14.3% from the pre-crash peak to the lowest point. They are a positive number, 4.3% above the pre-crisis peak to today. So they are back at their highest point they were, plus a little, right, just like El Paso is, with an overall trough to today increase of 21.67%, uh, which is still good, still respectable. What's going to blow you away is when we look at some of these numbers uh, and the top performers because it's, it's freaking crazy. Uh, next on the list is number, is it number four on the list? Uh, it is, but I think I already said number four. But anyway, next on our list is Camden, New Jersey. Second quarter of 2007 was the peak prior to the crisis. A quarter four, 2011 was the trough, the lowest point after the crisis. Uh, the drop between pre-crisis to trough was 25.7% with a negative 6.2% change from pre-crisis peak to today. So even if you try to go back to that highest point before the crisis, they're still not at that point yet. However, they've had an overall increase from the lowest point to today of 26.23%. Uh, Bridgeport, Stamford, Norwalk, Connecticut is next on our list, number three on, uh, in, the, in the, not number three, so number seven, or eight, number eight, <laughs> right? We already did the worst. We're going, we're going from worse, worse to less worse. Sorry. Boy, I, I sure am clearly communicating this. Bridgeport, Stanford, Norwalk, Connecticut. Second quarter of 2006 was the pre-crisis peak. Quarter one of 2012 was the trough, the lowest point after the after the downturn. That was a complete drop from the from the peak to the trough was a 23.7 percent drop, negative 3.4 percent today. So they haven't even again reached the highest point that had been reached prior to the downturn. However. They've seen a 26.69% increase from the lowest point to today. Next, number number eight, nine <laughs> on the list. New Haven, Milford, Connecticut. Fourth quarter of 2006 was the pre-crisis peak. Quarter one of 2012 was the lowest point. It's interesting how some of these are so spread, spread out. 23.9% uh, difference between those two from the highest to the lowest point. With a again same numbers for Bridgeport, negative three point four percent in terms of uh, pre-crisis peak to today, but again a twenty six point nine one percent increase from the lowest point to today. Finally, the number uh, ten worst <laughs> performing area: Hartford, East Hartford, Middletown, Connecticut. First quarter of two thousand and seven was the pre-crisis peak. Quarter three of two thousand and eleven was the lowest point. Negative 23.4% difference between those two periods with a negative 2.4% change uh, for to the to the to today. So from the we are not at the point where we've met the peak prior to the crisis in Hartford, East Hartford, Middletown. Uh, but that is a 27.34% increase between the lowest point and today. All right, so now 
we move on to the properties or the properties, the areas that have seen the greatest increase. And some of these numbers are going to blow your socks away. Um, I, I know that, and particularly since I am, I live in, in some of these markets that they're going to talk about. And a lot of these markets are markets that we have talked about. And the number one market is one I have strongly suggested. And I think this partially validates it, but also make, give, adds a level of concern, right? If it's because you want to figure out if you're coming in at the top of a market or if you're if you're going to invest unwisely if you're investing in something that has seen so much of a recovery in terms of price. All right, so let's go ahead and look at number 10, Atlanta, Sandy Springs, Alpharetta, Georgia. This is an interesting one because this one has seen a ton of investment. It continues to draw investors. For those of you who've been listening to the show for a while, uh, last year I did, last year was probably my peak year in terms of interviews that I did for the show. And, and out of the, I don't know how many folks we interviewed, I'd say half were very into the Atlanta marketplace. This is where they were making stuff happen. Uh, at number 10, they had the second quarter of 2007 was the peak of prices prior to the crisis. The lowest point was the first quarter of 2012. And the peak to the lowest point is a 30.3% drop. The uh, pre-crisis peak to today, so in other words, the highest point before the crisis to today shows a 35.1% increase in house prices. And this number will blow you away. Uh, One of many that are to come that will blow you away. From the trough to today, 93.87% increase. Just wrap your head around that for a second. So a house that cost that had dropped to being a hundred thousand dollars at the trough is now worth one hundred ninety three, right? That's just using the round numbers. But if you take that up, obviously, if it's a five hundred thousand dollar house at the low point, well, suddenly you're creeping up on a million, right? So I mean, it's 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 an insane increase, and and just to calibrate you, it is the lowest change from trough to current of the top 10. All right, so number nine, Charleston, North Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston has come up on lists we have covered before. Uh, We've had them be, uh, in terms of lists where we were talking about increases in property values, this one cropped up on a few of those lists over the last couple of years, but also return on investment for rentals. Uh, So it's been kind of an interesting mix for Charleston, indicating that even though it's seen a lot of uh, increase here, it may be still a good a good place to look. So let's go ahead and look at the numbers here. Uh, the second quarter of 2007 was its peak. Quarter one of 2011 was its lowest point, and there's a 29% drop from peak to trough to lowest point, with a 37.8% increase from the previous peak to today. So they've already recovered all the way up to the peak plus 37.8%. The difference from the lowest point to today is 94.05%. So just a little bit more than Atlanta was seeing. Number eight, my uh, neck of the woods, Oakland, Berkeley, Livermore, California. Uh, My oldest son is going to school in Berkeley. Go Cal, go Bears. Uh, Fourth quarter of 2005 was its peak prior to the downturn. Second quarter of 2011 was its lowest point. Difference between those two numbers represents a 47.1% drop in home prices. Uh, The pre-crisis peak to today is a 19.5% increase. But the increase from the lowest point to today in these areas, Oakland, Berkeley, Livermore, California, 126.08%. So more than double, right? Crazy. Number seven on our list, Tacoma, Lakewood, Washington. Third quarter of 2007 was their peak. Quarter two of 2011 was their lowest point. The difference between those two was a a value drop or a home price drop of 38%. The peak to today, up 28.3%. The the lowest point to today, a 106.85% increase. Uh, Number six on our list, Grand Rapids, Kentwood, Michigan. Fourth quarter of 2005 was its uh, was its peak. Quarter one of 2011 was its lowest point. That was a drop of 25.3 percent for the house price. 46 percent is the peak uh, 
to today. So it's just from the highest point it was before the downturn to today is a 46% increase in value. And so far on our list, that is the highest um, when it, coming in at number six with a 95.37% increase from the lowest point to today. Now, ne- and the next one's interesting because this has been an area that has come up on tons of different uh, reports that we've read. We talked, uh, we've had actual live feedback from listeners about how for a while there was a virtually impossible to find a home. I had clients uh, last year, actually the end of last year, who, who I helped sell their home. They were moving to Denver, uh, and it was a, they had a heck of a time finding a place. But what's really interesting is when they started their search, really hard to find places. When they finished their search and actually ended up selling, and I think that was in October, November, uh, suddenly they had tons of homes to choose from. Uh, they had a very prolonged escrow and ended up having to fall out of escrow because of troubles we were having on our side with us with a buyer who wasn't fulfilling their obligations. Ended up, and then I, I, I pulled another buyer out of the hat and got them back into escrow with a new buyer. They had already exited escrow on the home they were trying to buy in Denver, only to discover that they were able to go back into escrow on that property because it had not sold. So I think that indicates a, a slight weakening, at least at the end of the market. Maybe once you get into the point where things are snowing in Denver, stuff just stops. I don't know. But I found it to be very interesting. They had started their search in the summer. Uh, they had, and, and by the time we got into those later months of the year, uh, they went from struggling to even find a listing to having tons of homes to choose from. They had dozens of homes to choose from. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and review the numbers here. First quarter of 2006 was the peak. Quarter four of 2008 was the low point. That is a super early low point. Uh, that indicates a very quick, in fact, it's the low, It's the earliest low point in the data that we're currently talking about. So they came back relatively quickly. Uh, the peak to the trough was an 8% drop. And again, that in my mind categorizes Denver as an area that was really able to weather it easily. They came out of that in two years. They had their, they had, they hit their low point in two years and started recovering from there. The uh, peak to current is a 93.5% increase in home sales or, or in uh, prices. So even after just having a very small, decrease in prices. They've enjoyed a very big increase uh, from the from the peak before to today. And in terms of the lowest point to today, obviously this is going to be a big number because their low point wasn't that low, 110%, 110.31%. These numbers, even though this might be a cautionary tale, right? You you look at this, you don't want to just assume, well, wow, with that much increase, I really don't want to be involved there. No, I don't think that's what this tells you. I think this tells you this was a resilient community compared to the rest of the freaking country uh, and that a purchase here is relatively solid. Uh, even if we had something that was horrible, right, that that was double the trouble, assuming an exact one-to-one, right, if it was double the trouble, that would mean we'd see a 16% drop in Denver while all the other places have much bigger drops, and assuming you put 20% down, you're still, in terms of equity, you've still got positive equity. Well, maybe not positive equity, but I mean, you're not in the hole. You know what I mean? You're not, you don't owe more than the home is, is, it has lent against it, uh, which, is, which is not a huge comfort, but it's better than being in a situation where uh, you, you owe so much more than it's worth, uh, which, man, there was an awful lot of people in that situation. Okay, so number four on our list, Seattle, Bellevue, Kent, Washington. This is one we've talked about a lot. They've had a ton of growth. It makes sense they are on this list. There's no surprise there. The second quarter of 2007 is when they hit their peak. The fourth quarter of 2011 was the lowest point. That's a 31.6% drop from the peak to the trough with a 43.2% increase from the peak. So from the highest point to today is a 43.2% increase. From the lowest point to today is a 109.35% percent increase. You know, and we talk about this stuff. I was doing my podcast during these times. So we were talking about these markets and what things were costing in 2011 at the lowest point for Seattle in 2008 in the fourth quarter uh, for Denver. We were talking about what things were going for. Imagine if 
if we had purchased in those times and managed to reap these equity growth numbers in, in investment properties. It's it's kind of mind boggling and and kind of annoys me when we the ones we're about to go to because I was in these markets and and I should have sold my blood to uh, buy some properties. Uh, anyway, next number three on the list: Sunnyvale, San Jose, Santa Clara, California. These these are areas that I'm regularly doing business in. Uh, San Jose, absolutely. South San Jose is 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 one of my areas where I'm I'm up there a lot talking to folks. Quarter two of 2006 was their peak. Quarter one of 2009 was the lowest point. Uh, that's a drop of 31.7 percent in terms of house prices. We're currently between the uh, peak to today. We're seeing a 43.3 percent increase, and in terms of the lowest point to today, 109.67 percent increase. Next on the list, not a surprise. Uh, and annoying, uh, San Francisco, San Mateo, Redwood City, third quarter of 2006 was the peak. Quarter two of 2011 was the lowest point. That's a 23.7% drop. And that's actually not that horrible. Um, I think I would get into more micro markets. Uh, grouping San Francisco, San Mateo, and Redwood City is a little bit goofy for me. Um, I, I see why they might do it. It may, I mean, a lot of folks are commuting in those areas. There's a lot of things going on there, but, uh, I think we would see a little bit more fluctuation if we just said San Francisco, San Mateo, Redwood city. If we looked at them individually, I I think there'd probably be a little more fluctuation. If you look at the peak to today, that's a 65.7% increase. If you look at the lowest point to today, it's a 117.16% increase. Here's the big one, and this is what I wanted to talk about because number one on our list is Boise, Idaho. And as you know, along with places like Chattanooga, Tennessee, Boise, Idaho has been my go-to. Um, and it's interesting for a lot of reasons because it, it it actually breaks some of the rules that we've talked about. Let's go ahead and get into it here a little bit. Pre-crisis peak was in the first quarter of 2007. The trough or lowest point was the first quarter of 2011, uh, and that's a 45% drop. So they had a huge drop. Uh, That's the second highest on our list. The only one that beats them is Oakland, Berkeley, Livermore. Uh, So Boise had a huge hit in the downturn. Um, So in terms of reinforcing that whole, hey, find a community that made it through the downturn, that one blows it away. Uh, But from the peak, the the pre-crisis peak to today is a 44.4% increase. From the lowest point to today is a 162.43% increase. So use this data, and I'm, I'm Boise is not off of my list. Boise is still on my list of places to look at, uh, particularly because the barrier to entry is so low. The, there, are, there are properties there where you can do the math and find positive cash flow rental properties right out of the bat without having to go crazy and, and, and negotiate prices way, way down. Um, but that is an interesting number to consider, and it's something that gives me pause to think, well, you know, maybe I, I should look at that a little bit more given the amount of value that was lost in those home prices. Uh, that's pretty nuts. Um, from Basically, from today to the peak, uh, they recovered everything that they lost to the trough. Um, and if, so if you had bought at the peak, right, you're, you're back up. Uh, but that implies that you have a strategy that gives you some longevity. You would need to have a strategy that lets you hold on to the to d- different properties so that you can weather those kinds of downturns. So for me personally, definitely going to take a closer look at the marketplace in Boise. I'm going to want to understand if the diversification we've seen in Boise today is a hedge against being as susceptible to a downturn as it was last time. Boise was not a tech hub last time. Uh, Boise, and and I'm basing that strictly off of where people were going. I didn't have anybody moving to Boise when I was selling houses before the downturn. Uh, Maybe I sold houses to a couple of folks who went to northern Idaho, uh, Coeur d'Alene, but but Boise wasn't even on my radar uh, for folks that were moving out of California. That has dramatically changed over the last few years, which brings up another point. Understand what's changed. Understand that this is data that covers a pretty long period of time and also a very turbulent period of time. So finding a good partner in these markets to kind of get a grip on these numbers and what has changed today, do we think these are areas that would experience the same 
general level of downturn in a similar scenario today? Or have some of these areas diversified? Or some of these areas are some of these areas less diverse in terms of their employment la- landscape than before? Because if so, that might play into decisions. If you're looking for strong places to invest, this is a great place to go in concert with other shows we've talked about where we've re- where we've reviewed return on investment and those kinds of wonderful numbers that we all should care about. So if it was me just jumping in, I'd say go to my shows on return on investment stats and then use this. Come and look at this because there's there's a lot more data here. We're just hitting the best and the worst. Um, their narrative here for the five places where the housing market recovered the most, number one was Boise. Boise. Um, there, there's not really a, an explanation here. It just says between the quarters of 2007 and 2011, home prices in Boise, Idaho fell more than 44%, about 11% more than the 33% drop nationally. So it exceeded the national average. And the 17th largest drop across all 100 metro areas in the study. Uh, from the crisis trough through the third quarter of 2019, home prices recovered by 162.4%, the highest rate for this metric across all 100 metros areas in the study. Additionally, from the pre-crisis peak in 2007 through the third quarter of 2019, home prices have grown by 44.4%. So interesting. Super interesting that was at the top of the list. I would have expected it not to be there. I would have expected San Francisco, the Bay, you know, Bay Area stuff to be the crazy numbers or, or something along those lines. What I find super interesting is that New York is not uh, in this top 10. We've talked a lot about New York, uh, and I find it interesting that it didn't end up appearing in the top 10. All right, folks. That's going to be it for today. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, spend your valuable time with me. It's always appreciated. Uh, And I hope that, as always, we've left you with more value on the table in terms of what we've talked about than time you've invested. Thanks again. I'll talk to you all next time.